Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm in love with it. <gasps> I think that's super cool. So I've talked on the show a lot about making syrups. I've done a whole episode on basic syrups. When I made all those, I talked about how to make a syrup from anything. Truth be told, I don't think I've really done much of that, so we're gonna do it today. I have made six syrups using unusual ingredients today. I think that probably the first thing to do with these is to make well-known classic cocktails with each one of these syrups and see just what that does. Probably those are gonna be very interesting and hopefully that will inspire some ideas for new cocktails. These are all two to one simple syrups. They're one part liquid, two parts sugar, and I'm saying liquid because one of them doesn't use water, and then some other stuff that adds flavor to them. How much of that other stuff? The answer is a lot, as much as you feel like using, because when you make syrups, there is no world where you make them too flavorful. The more flavorful they are, the better. Why? You want them to be as potent as possible so that you can use less of them. I make all my syrups two to one. There's two reasons for that. The first is that historically, if you look at really old cocktail books, the recipes, two to one. Why? It lasts longer. It's like shelf stable, basically. It will sit there without refrigeration and stay usable for weeks, maybe months. I've had bottles of grenadine that I've kept around for years. This one is pretty ancient. There's no mold in that or anything, it's fine. The second reason is Nickel Morris, he put it into words I really liked, which is the goal with making simple syrup isn't to make sweet water, it's to make pourable sugar. Why would you want to have less control? over how much water you add to your drink. If you want more water in it, you can stir it longer, shake it longer, you could add water to it. But to the most minimal degree possible, do you want your drink's wetness tied into your drink's sweetness? And why don't you just use granulated sugar? Because it will not dissolve. It will not dissolve into a cocktail unless you're gonna put that thing in a blender and leave it there for straight up four minutes. Two to one is the way to go. Where do you wanna start? Which one is the most interesting to you, Meredith? Ooh, they're all pretty cool, but I would say black pepper is okay. the most common ingredient. So let's start there. Yeah, let's start there. I guess the first thing I should do is make a little soda out of black pepper and see what we think of this. Apparently we're doing a little bit of straining in this process. So I'm only gonna use a half an ounce. We're gonna make some seltzer real quick. Syrups and bitters. A good way to sample bitters is like on the back of your hand or in a soda. A good way to sample syrups is in a soda, although you can also just taste them with a spoon or something. This soda probably wants a little bit more time, but that's okay. I think three to one is a pretty reasonable ratio for syrup to soda water when you're making a soft drink, but each syrup will be a little different. Okay, here we go, black pepper soda. Freaking awesome. So cool. It has an evolution right away. You get the not hot part of the black pepper right up front. Black pepper isn't really that hot typically, but here it's so concentrated that it actually becomes pretty hot. So you get this interesting black pepper flavor up front matched with sweetness, which then tempers itself and turns into kind of like bottom of the tongue hot, which is a lot different than capsaicin-y hot. I don't know if there is capsaicin in this, but it's nothing like a chili pepper, of course. It's more like an allspice or something. I'm thinking this goes into a margarita. Ooh, black pepper margarita. Let's try that. Get my shaker. Normally I don't use syrup at all in a margarita, but you know what, a lot of people do. And since we're kind of deviating already, maybe this is more than a simple margarita with black pepper syrup to begin with. Just the fact that I have to think about the fact that I don't normally put a syrup into a margarita means that this is already a drink all of its own to some degree. One ounce there. Like how far do you want to deviate? I don't know. Let's see what we get here. I think this probably is going to stand on its own. Yeah, I'm Two curious. ounces of tequila. Now's where it gets complicated in my brain because normally I would put Cointreau in. Well, I think we just build it that way because a lot of people do make a margarita with a little sweetness in it. And I don't expect that any of these flavors that we've just added are going to compete with the pepper flavor. I might cut back a little bit on this. We're gonna do three quarters instead of the normal full ounce that I would normally do. And then let's do a half an ounce of pepper syrup. This stuff is pretty potent. All right, let's go to actually three quarters of an ounce of this too. Uh, we'll put our margarita in this. I think this is a good glass for a margarita. So I'm gonna put some salt on the rim here. I will try to do something that I wanted to do last time with this, which is this geometric thing. And now we'll shake our drink. Uh, I'm gonna use one cube because we are running a little bit short of ice today. It really shouldn't make much of a difference. So, oh. There we have it, black pepper margarita. Let's see how it is. I'll try it without the salt rim first. Huh, black pepper's more mild in there than I would expect. 
I'm not sure I'm tasting. <laughs> oh, really? I might have oversaturated my palate here by tasting the soda and stuff. My throat is burning from pepper. I'm definitely getting that. I definitely messed up my palate a little bit because this water tastes sweet. Try this, but I think I'm gonna start building a second one. Do you get it much? Not really, right? I mean, given how potent that syrup was too, it's surprising. So I think that the lime is really cutting the pepper there, which I really didn't expect. So let's just try that again, this time with like less lime. I should have done a, a build and taste as I went. Tequila, two ounces. I do get the after effects of it. Like I can feel my tonsils like kind of hot and burning. So it's in there. Let's do half an ounce of corn this time. Start with a half an ounce of pepper. Let's see where that gets us. So here's the thing. Cointreau is a little bit sweet. Cointreau is acting as a sweetener and a modifier there. It's the wrong way to go. We ditched the Cointreau entirely. Two ounces of tequila. One ounce of black pepper syrup because it's now taking the role of our Cointreau entirely. And obviously a lot of these things would go great in a tiki drink. Now we're getting there. And then I'm gonna start with a half an ounce of uh, lime. I think that's cool. Let's shake that. Here we go. That's fun. Definitely reads as a margarita. The Cointreau was a mistake. And you get the lime sweet tequila. Woo! <laughs> up front. And then rising this volume, the peppercorns come up. And then they take over. It gets hot. Hot. And that's funny too, because I don't usually like like chili pepper heat, but I do love black pepper. That's cool. Let me try with a little nip of the salt too. It is sweet for a margarita, but you won't mind. Could you call it a spicy margarita? 100%, you could call it a pepper margarita. Okay, pepper, but yeah. It, it totally presents as a margarita. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, see? <laughs> Meredith likes it. Yeah, it's definitely sweeter than I like my margaritas, but the heat from the pepper takes over. Yeah, at first you're like, that's sweet, but when the right. heat comes in, you're like, I'm glad it was. Yeah. Like, my mouth is on fire, but yeah. in a way that I actually find really enjoyable. Right, not my nose is going to start running, I need no. water. Sort of yeah, it's out. not like nuclear wings. Pleasant. Yeah. That's a cool drink. What do you want to do next? Let's do a cardamom. Right after this, we're going to make some cardamom drink. So what do you do with cardamom? Well, the first thing you do is you make a soda. About a half an ounce. A lot of pulp in there. And now we do one, two ounces. What a fun kind of thing. It's so herbal. Herbal's wrong. Incense-like. It's perfumed in a very enjoyable way. Try that, what do you think? Tell me what you think would, that would go good in a cocktail. I have an idea for what I want to pair it with. I'm not sure it's gonna work out so good, but we could try it. Mm. The cardamom like masks the sweetness. I'm gonna make a mojito with it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go. It's a good thing to bring out those flavors. I'm gonna actually shake this. We're gonna take a slightly different approach to making a mojito. You know why? Uh, who wants to muddle? Muddling is for suckers. Get an ounce of lime juice in there. Ounce of cardamom. And this is part of the reason I wanna shake it because my cardamom syrup has all this pulp in it and I, it's easiest to get it out by sh shaking it and straining it, right? I'm gonna take my wiltier mint and just throw that in there. Normally I want my mojitos to be ultra minty. In this case, I think I want the mint to be more of just a part of the whole. I'm hoping it comes out that way. Two ounces of white rum. Hamilton will be fine. Hope I can get another bottle of this stuff because I really like it. Put a spear into this glass. So I don't need to muddle because I'm shaking with ice, right? So the mint is gonna get beat to crap by our shaking action. And that's gonna do plenty to express all the mint oils that we would otherwise do by muddling. Muddling is lovely and building a drink in the glass is great, but why? Now, I'm not gonna shake it for quite as long or as aggressively as I normally would because I'm going to carbonate this. I'm gonna add water to it. However, I will say, if I had a spare carbonator bottle, I would have probably built this as a double. Get a little more water in there, shake them more, maybe even just pour two ounces of water in. Shake the hell out of it, get the whole thing really cold, throw that into the carbonator and carbonate the whole thing. Because when you lengthen a drink with soda, you're only adding, you're only adding this much carbonation to it. It doesn't really make the whole drink bubbly. When you carbonate the whole drink, oh my God, is that crazy what it does to like a Collins or a Mojito or something like that. It's really fun.
slap a garnish in there. Why do you do that? I don't know. Supposedly it releases some mints from the drink. There you go, simple garnish. Grab a straw and let's see how this cardamom mojito went. Tools. That's fun. It's a mojito with this brief touch of cardamom. Oh, and a big cardamom finish. That is cool. Cardamom is not overpowering at all. It goes into this drink and almost disappears. You get the sweet rum mint up front, right? And then that goes one, two, three, and then you get this like perfume incense note, the cardamom, and then that kind of goes away again. And then it comes back on the finish where it presents as the same plus vanilla, actually, I think. And it, it rides out on that. It's, it's nice. It's breezy too. This drink is not overpowering in any way. Try it out. That's cool. I like that. Oh yeah. Right? It's in there and it's good. Yeah. I always say on the breath out. Yeah. On the exhale. Yeah. yeah. What do we want to do this uh, next? Do you want to do saffron? Yeah. Let's do saffron right after this. I think I'm gonna make an old fashioned with saffron. What does saffron taste like? Oh, that's about fun. To find out. You're about to find out. Yeah, exactly. So uh, right after this, we're gonna do something with saffron syrup. I'm thinking it's gonna be an old fashioned. All right. Uh, let's make a saffron soda so that we can see where we're at with saffron. I said I want to make an old fashioned with this. Let me make sure I do. Oh man, smell that right away. Whoa. Saffron is a really expensive ingredient. A lot of people are cringing right now. Honestly, it didn't take much to do this. I'm going to pour myself a uh, half an ounce or an ounce and I'm filtering it because I just left the saffron threads in there because why not? They're gonna just keep infusing it and making it more saffrony and more potent. Making a soda, in she goes. Just shy of an ounce, that's fine. Saffron is like an, is a thing that like people want to war over. <laughs> it's one of the, the spice trade spices, the spice roads. All right, top that up. I mean, you can see the color right away here. Whoa. Wow. It even gets more yellow, right? It's gold. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Saffron soda. Wow. Wow. It's so floral, which is funny because saffron to me doesn't usually taste floral, but this actually gets to a place at the end that is not super far away from jasmine. But at the first part, it's saffron. And if you know what saffron tastes like, you know what it tastes like. And if you don't, it'll be hard to explain. Oh God, it's distantly reminiscent of like latex paint. But latex paint mostly smells and tastes like bleach. This doesn't taste or smell like bleach at all. And then it does turn very floral, very much like jasmine. Ooh, that's super duper good. Honestly, I kind of want to put this into something other than an old fashioned, but let's start with an old fashioned. Give that a sip. Oh my God. I have no idea what saffron tastes like. So. Yeah, I might have to like look up a drink because that might be a drink that goes into a room without a key. <laughs> You're just like, I'm not getting anything. Not a lot. Okay, I don't know what to say. I mean, that's a potent flavor to me. Mm. Doesn't register for Meredith. Potent for me. That's funny. I mean, like, instantly I get it. Mm. Really? Maybe I should just make you, like, a simple soda so that you can see the difference. Maybe, between, yeah. Between straight sugar and saffron. First off, how could they taste the same? Look at the color I know, I, I'm yeah. not... It looks really cool on camera. Okay. There's a difference, but, like... Do they get subtle? I think it's subtle. Thing. I would go to war with this. I would That's amass the so Navy to claim this. This is an unbelievable flavor to me. You're blowing my mind right now. Yeah, I taste something, but I don't think I'd be able to pick it out in a cocktail. Wow, okay. Well, let's see if it shows up in an old fashioned for starters. <laughs> There's a part of me that wants to leave the saffron threads in the drink in this case. So old fashions are usually fairly non-sweet. I am going to pour a little sweeter than normal. I can go as hard as a half an ounce in an old fashioned. I'm actually gonna go to three quarters. If it's too sweet, we can add more whiskey to it. I'm gonna put in my two dashes of Ango. I'm going to pour in two ounces of Garrison Brothers small batch whiskey, apparently. Let's get a big cube. These cubes are actually built for melting into spheres. So what the hell, let's do that. I'm using my Visky Ice Cube Sphere Melter. I'm only putting this towel around it because I don't have like a nice drip tray to do this with. A lot of people look at them and they think they're for making spherical ice, like from water. They're not, they're for taking a big block of ice, putting it in there and melting it into a sphere. And it's just basically a big aluminum heat sink. Okay, we got our sphere. Put your spoon under your cube so you can lower it in gently. Otherwise you're gonna have a big splash back. And then I'm gonna stir it up. Twist of orange. Hmm, gotta love the smell of that. 
And here we go. This is my saffron old fashioned. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Oh, you get the saffron. I think actually less sweetness you're not going to get it because the whiskey is pretty potent here. It's going to overpower you. It becomes saffrony about halfway through its profile. And then you get this mingling of corn and floral sweetness that carries you out. It's a very enjoyable drink. It is on the sweet end of an old fashioned. Oh yeah, there's that flowers, those jasmine-y notes. Ooh. It's definitely got some surprising twists in that flavor profile. This wants to go with a more delicate spirit, I think, if I'm honest. Let me think about that a little bit and I'll be right back. And I think we might actually get a second go with the saffron. I think this works. I just think that there's probably a better drink to show it off. And I want to give that a try. All right, so I took a little break there. I'm thinking about this saffron here. I don't think it's going to work tremendously loudly in a lot of drinks. It is a more delicate flavor. I want to put it into a delicate drink. Honestly, I was thinking more like a Cosmo. Let's get my shaker and let's just kind of see where we can wind up here. I'm going to start with two ounces of Stoli here. Actually, I'm going to start with an ounce and a half because this shit is potent. This is the 100 proof Stoli. I think I want just a little bit of tartness here. Let's go with a half an ounce of lemon juice. What the heck? Let's do half an ounce of Cointreau. Let's just taste where we're at now, because we're going to get into our simple, our fancy simple right next. Tastes like a Cosmo, basically, or parts of a Cosmo. Let's put in half an ounce of this sweetener. This is our saffron simple. Whoa, that's saffrony. <laughs> For me, you won't taste it at all for some reason. I think it's just like, it's exotic and cultured and like there's something in the Midwesterner's DNA that like, you can't even perceive it. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> taste like much to me. How about sour cream and jalapenos? Does that taste like a lot? Sour cream and jalapeno. We're ranch. Yeah, all oh, right, right, We're right. Yeah, this people. isn't ranch. You can't taste it, sorry. <laughs> ranch wasn't even on my radar. I forgot ranch exists. I'm a liberal East Coast elitist over here. I don't know if that needs anything else. The only thing I'm a little annoyed about is the color. No, I love the color because yeah. we get the saffron really cool. color yeah. here. No, let's live with that. Let's keep that. Let's shake it with an ice cube. Let's drain that away into my very tiny glass. Oh yeah, look at that. Looks like orange juice, my goodness. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get an orange peel here. As is tradition with a Cosmo, we will do a flamed orange peel. That was a really good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally left black marks on the top of the drink. <laughs> People on TikTok are very good at this. I am not. I think it only works on TikTok. Something they have different cameras over there. Here we go. Oh yeah. I get plenty of saffron in that drink. Honestly, <laughs> it's over flamed. Like I also get a lot of char, which is unusual. I've never flamed an orange quite that well. It was a <gasps> Ooh, it just keeps coming back. Oh, that's so much fun. And it keeps coming back and it keeps coming back. Mmm, that's cool. Okay, we gotta name this drink. Mellow yellow. Mellow yellow. You can't call a drink with saffron in it a mellow yellow. That's the song. I'm so mad about saffron. She's so mad about me. We call her mellow yellow. Oh, do you think of Donovan? Yep. <laughs> I do. That's what it's been in my head since we started with the All right. saffron. Fair enough. I think that we should. <laughs> I feel like I want to go with like a Silk Road or <laughs> a Spice Trade. I don't know, something a little more historic than, <laughs> sure, it's a Mellow Yellow. One more sip, man, this is super cool. Super saffrony. That's awesome, I'm very happy with the way that came out. Whew. I was a little bit worried because I didn't want to admit that saffron syrup was a bust. It doesn't really work out so good in an old fashioned. It's just too much spirits. Give her a taste, man. All right, go back to your chair. <laughs> I'm not lying. I taste the saffron like crazy. I don't know. I'm a dozen. There's something, something going it's on. Good. There. It's a very pleasant drink. Like maybe if I got hit with like a strong dose of saffron, I would know what I was looking for a little bit more. Put your nose in this bottle yeah, and maybe smell, I it. smell it. Yeah, like I smell it. I can't really describe it. Right, because it's saffron. It's magic. It's a delicious drink. Okay, fine. No, it's good. I <laughs> <laughs> like cardamom, like I know what I'm tasting. Yeah, that sure. tastes 
like something I haven't had before. But well, I'm, I think I, that's right, probably though. Probably the saffron. Yeah, I don't like, think you've been exposed to a lot of saffron. No, I haven't. I don't have a lot of familiarity with. Yeah, use um, saffron rice. It's like a big thing in like Spanish and I think right, Latin yeah. American cooking. Latin American is that still acceptable? It's certainly a more subtle like. Yeah, I like that drink a lot. I would order okay. that drink. You don't need to pretend. You can... I'm not pretending okay. that I like it. I'm not pretending that I can t like tell what the saffron is. Sure. Like. Yeah, that's fair. You can't pull the saffron out of the drink. Okay. Yeah. I can understand. I can understand that. We've done saffron. We've done black pepper. We did cardamom. This is turmeric. Lavender to me is actually not super exciting, and we are getting a little long on this one, so maybe I scrap the lavender. If you want to do something with lavender, make a gin and tonic, make a Collins, actually, anything like that. Gin and floral stuff goes so well together. There's my lavender advice. If you buy fresh turmeric, and I do say buy fresh, you'll see that it looks almost identical to ginger, but smaller. But it's also much like wetter, so it doesn't take quite as much time to do an infusion. Why is there not like a soft drink company that makes like, yeah, just you know, turmeric sodas? sodas. Yeah. Maybe we should make that company, Meredith. Maybe we should go into the soft drink business and make turmeric sodas and black pepper sodas and stuff. Give that a try. I think that's super neat. I already neat. know I'm gonna love this. Ooh. Oh, it almost tastes carroty. I was gonna say it's carroty. It's a little bit different than carrots, but it is not far from carrots. Not at all, especially with the sweetness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right, because carrots are pretty sweet. And I guess that probably the orangeness in turmeric and the orangeness in carrots are probably coming from similar compounds. Well, they're both rooty. They're not both rooty, they're both roots. Right. They're not root-like, they are roots. Thank you, semantics police. Yeah, semantics police, mansplainer <laughs> extraordinaire. <laughs> it's funny that it does present as carrots so strongly, though. Fuck it, let's make a, um, a Queen's Park Swizzle with that. I am going to adjust these proportions just a touch here to make sure that the turmeric is front and center, properly featured. We're gonna take our glass, we're gonna put some mint into it, stuff that's a little bit wilty because it's good for what we're doing with it, but it's not great for garnishing. I'm gonna go just a little bit lighter than I normally would. So we're gonna do a split rum. We're gonna do an ounce of our Jamaican Appleton Reserve. You know what? I'm gonna do another half an ounce of Jamaican rum. Normally, a Queen's Park Swizzle is something like three ounces of rum. We're gonna walk that back quite a bit on this one. Try to get to about an ounce of lime juice. And then actually, I do think a whole ounce of our turmeric syrup, right? We can always rum this up or mint it up or something after the fact. Two shakes of Angostura. I will fill that up with some crushed ice. Get my swizzle stick, if it will fit fit in there. All right, well, we're not gonna be able to properly swizzle it, unfortunately, just because these legs are too long. I think there's plenty of turmeric in there because everything was come out very yellow. Let's uh, give it a shot. Let's see how this turmeric QPS is. Should be fun. Well, it's freaking delicious. I don't know if I'm actually registering a ton. Of yeah, it comes in a little late, but I'm, I wish it was a little more turmeric -y. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. You just need to just sip a little more. Oh, ho, ho. that, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> it is immediately recognizable as a Queen Sparks Whistle, and it, it pushes it into a, I mean, like there's a whole other step in its evolution. I'm in love with, oh, this might be better than a regular QBS. I think that's super cool. First off, it's lime, it's mint, it's sweet. I might want more Ango, but I'm also worried that's gonna overpower our turmeric note that comes through. And the rum isn't super front and center in this drink. I don't know that it typically is. Yeah, it probably would be if we took this to the three ounces that a Queen's Park Swizzle usually has, but I wanted to dial that back a little bit. And if I did bring it up, I'd probably use a more neutral rum even. Then you get the turmeric. And the turmeric comes in with that twangy kind of carroty note, and it lingers. It hangs out. It's not super loud, but it is there. If you have a mental image of what a Queen's Park Swizzle tastes like, this will taste like a Queen's Park Swizzle in the fourth dimension with one more direction that it moves in. I think it's fucking fun. Fun and dangerous. You wanna try it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it doesn't show up on every sip, but when it does, it's such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it's tough to drink because the ice is too small, I guess. I can't get anything through the straws, problem. <laughs> it is a problem. You have to really kind of flood your mouth. Less crushed ice, maybe. Oh, there we go. It's hard to get with from the lime and the rum. 
I think it's just mm. a function of volume. I think that the ice is making it really hard to sip it. <laughs> it's an interactive drink. <laughs> it's occurring to me that this isn't looking so good for me. <laughs> Let's move it right along to our final drink right after this. All right, so I've got this macadamia syrup. And I, first off, we have to see how it does in a soda. But secondly, I think the obvious choice here is to make a Mai Tai. Yeah, I was so hoping you were going to say that. And really, syrup, I think the term would be macadamia orgeat. There's something about when you put nuts in it, it's an orgeat. Technically, no, but sure. In common parlance. And it should loosh. Loosh. Should turn kind of creamy looking. I get it. The macadamia. Ooh, yeah. Oh, man. For half a tick, it tastes like almond. And then it changes directions on you and turns into this, like, super rich, super tasty macadamia. All macadamia. Oh, yeah. Right away you get the it. The smell, too, is just... Very pleasant. Just oh, steam. man. Man, that's good. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. That's amazing. Mai Tai time. I love a Mai Tai. So we're going to start with our lime juice. We want one ounce. Match it with our orgeat. A lot of times in a Mai Tai, you'll split the orgeat with simple. I say, fuck that. Increase the orgeat. Really bring that flavor forward. Half an ounce of dry curacao. Now, I want to build a rum package. Um, and to do that, I'm going to start with three quarters an ounce of OFTD. Eh, closer to a, an ounce. We're going to put some Appleton Estate in there. Get a little Jamaican representation. And hey, this white stash, nobody is going to be upset about it going in. There we go. Two ounces of rums. Okay. Open pour that. Set a lime in there. Grab yourself some decent looking mint. Make your little minty thing. There you go. Put that in the drink. Grab a shorter straw and put it so that, and this is important, I think, put it so that the straw comes out of the mint forest so that your nose has to hit that mint when you drink it. And there we have what hopefully will be a really cool macadamia Mai Tai. And it is. A totally new dimension in Mai Tai. Wow. Powerful macadamia flavor. I put that on par with like a real Mai Tai, with, a, with an almond Mai Tai. It is basically a Mai Tai bent into the direction of another nut. It's really fun. That's really cool. I don't know what else to say about the flavor. I mean, a Mai Tai is a Mai Tai, which is a spirit forward, well-balanced, sweet lime, tropical cocktail. Well, California tiki pretend cocktail, usually with strong almond no notes, here with strong macadamia notes. Very strong. Meredith, try that out. Mm. Was the Mai Tai created in Hawaii? No, it was made up in uh, California, as far as anybody knows. Got Northern it. California, probably like San Francisco. I feel like this uh, is the Hawaiian Mai Tai because macadamia nuts yeah. are so... I mean, the actual Hawaiian Mai Tai is, I think they call it an Aloha Mai Tai. There's a hotel that sells a Mai Tai. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And that, at some point, became what people think of as a Mai Tai, but it's got pineapple juice and a bunch of different fruit juices yeah. in it, and it's mm -hmm. not like a traditional Mai Tai at all. It's an inferior cocktail. This reads to me as a Hawaiian Mai Tai. The only thing you could do to make this uh, more Hawaiian to me would be to either accentuate the mint or drop the mint and replace it with like a jasmine blossom Ooh. or some kind of a tropical flower. So that that's what you're smelling when you go in for a sip. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, I really like that. Oh my God, that's good. Holy shit, make this. Meredith, I think we have to wrap it up. I think we do. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been How to Drink. We did some stuff with some really weird syrups today. I didn't get to the lavender one. To be perfectly honest, it does to my mouth taste a little bit soapy in cocktails. Definitely there's places to use it. Anything floral. Look at gin stuff. Look at garden party cocktails. Syrups are easy to make. You can make all kinds of flavors in syrups. You can try them in different cocktails. You can invent new cocktails. For instance, this uh, Silk Road, I don't know what you call it, this turmeric based drink that I've had enough of, I'm quite drunk. And I hope this was fun for you. I hope this was educational. I hope this opens up new horizons in your cocktail making experiences. My name is Greg, this is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them, and I've been making it for 10,000 years. You will find me on all these social media places appearing before your very eyes. Meredith, what do we have going on now that the people want to know about? A podcast. We have a podcast. Our podcast is called Midnight Local. It's Meredith and I shooting the shit, chewing the fat, jawing at each other about whatever comes up, but mostly movies. 
And uh, it's a fun, cozy time sitting around our couch in the uh, middle of the night with us. Why don't you join for that? You will find it at the link in the pin comment below. You're going to find it up here in the top corner. You're going to find it at bit.ly slash midnight local. You're going to find it at youtube.com slash midnight local. It's the coolest, hottest podcast on the street. Everybody's into it. Get into it before you're left behind. Otherwise, there's a lot of how to drink out there making the show for forever. Thank you so much for watching. Here are four more things I want you to know about. Goodbye. Good night. Good luck. Try some weird syrups. Get weird. Get weird.